Arsenal Fan TV, I'm here with uh, John Smith. Now, John is a football agent that has got years and years of experience. <laughs> He's got years and years of experience of uh, doing deals. And of course, we do uh, the transfer daily every day. And I thought, you know what? This, is a, this guy is a real agent, a true agent. He's done many deals. And we'll be able to break it down for us just how these deals work out. Because the thing is about transfers nowadays, everybody thinks it's really easy. You know, they'll see a player, he's available for <laughs> 30 million. Go and get it done, Wenger. You know, so you'll be able to shed some light on that. But first of all, tell us about, you know, how long you've been doing this. Well, 30-odd um, years. I uh, came into it in 1986. My, my first two clients were the England football team, the whole lot and Diego Maradona, so it was a pretty good start. Diego Maradona? Yeah, it was, good. Wow. It, was, it, was, it was a good beginning. It's an interesting guy. <laughs> I was with him for about four years, did some interesting stuff. He was, uh, went from Barcelona to Napoli, um, and then I was told uh, by the people at Napoli that my services were no longer required. <laughs> and, uh, That's a shame, because I wanted to get into it. I was going to be like, I want to hear some of that, because yeah, I used to hear some things about that Napoli stuff. <laughs> I can tell you stuff, but you, know, you don't argue with those people when they say, OK, thanks. In fact, that's how it was. When yeah. we had, four years later, I got met by a delegation of uh, people at Diego's home, and they said, hey, thank you. It's been really good. I went, eh, pleasure. They said, no, 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 thank you, and goodbye. <laughs> So it was another regime. So, but it was good fun. I mean, we had um, Diego had special dispensation to drive through red traffic lights in Naples. He wow. was that. He was that famous. That you know, N Naples is a, a very religious place. They're like big posters mm. of Jesus hanging off the buildings, and then next door to the posters of Jesus are posters of Diego. So it was like that big, and uh, he, could, he just couldn't drive through Naples. So they <laughs> gave him special permission to. Uh, mm. He's a lovely lad, actually. He was a really lovely lad he just had so many people around him and you've done a lot of deals over the years and, and i know you've been involved in a lot of arsenal deals yes yeah i mean was involved in bringing uh Carnu into yeah. arsenal um freddie jungberg um i was actually probably done 10 15 transfers in and out of mm -hmm. arsenal alexander Kleb. um um we've done I, i'm just trying to think there's uh uh, probably between myself and, and the group of people that I work with, we've probably done more than most of the agents that that Arsene oh. and his regime have worked with. So, uh -huh. so without getting you in trouble, <laughs> how easy or how hard are Arsenal to deal with? Well, Arsenal, I think, uh, and I'm slightly biased because if you um, mm. cut me, I do bleed red. So I'm I'm mm. a, I'm, a, I'm a fan as well. Um, but in reality, they're actually tough very tough. You have to break down certain barriers in each transaction. Uh, but when you get there and you shake the hand, you've got a deal. Mm. And you know that you're dealing with good people. I mean, historically, I used to deal with uh, Ken Fryer, um, before him, all the regimes that, that ran just before Arsene. Uh, and I think you've got to look at, at, at you know, Arsene gets some criticism these days, um, some right, some wrong. Um, but his, his um, the heritage that he has created, and it is a heritage, um, will have longevity way beyond his human standing as manager at the club. Um, I think you, you have to look back at the scouting system that he put in place um, in the days when Emmanuel, Pe uh, Emmanuel Petit was there. Um, uh, oh, by the way, I think that new signing has got a bit of Emmanuel Petit about right, him. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah, he's got a, yeah. he's, 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 uh, that's a that's a really good signing, by yeah. the way, and and done early as well. Yeah. But I just think. Um, that whole system, this, the scouting system we had in place, was phenomenal. And over the years, it's, it's got, um, I was going to say corrupted, that's the wrong word, because people get older and, and situations change, and I just think it's, it's, it's got debased in some of its currency, because uh, you can't always have the best scouts in France or the best scouts in Serbia or wherever it is. And, and now I think uh, you've got to respect that ultimately he will make the right decision. And he normally does. I mean, he doesn't very often get it wrong. I mean, Ospina was possibly not his best mm. move, but there's a lot of besides that that have. Um, I mean, Santi Cazorla and people like that were around there, but he was the one that found them. So yes, I suppose I'm, a, I'm an Arsene supporter, mm. um, but a realist as well. You know? And, and um, there's a lot in the Arsenal system which uh, the fans possibly don't understand, which mm. they, if, they, if they would 
ex if it was explained to them, I think they'd understand a little bit more. Now, now what's this, uh, in your book, there's a section in the book about how Arsenal use a lot of stats. I know a lot, a lot of football clubs use um, a lot of stats and that, but you, you, you was talk, you're talking about Arsenal, how they use a lot of stats to identify players. Okay, so we've come from a point where Arsene Wenger comes in with a new psychology. Uh, that psychology grows. Uh, he brings in a scouting team, which is fantastic. The psychology grows again. It envelops the club. And now we've got a change dynamic in Arsenal. I mean, I grew up with 1-0 to the Arsenal and everything else. And it was great. We won. We lost. We had some pretty crap years when I was there in the 60s and, and, uh, and, and, and 70s. In fact, actually, the reason that I became a football agent was a bit of a nebulous reason in the way because I was, it was proven to be not quite accurate. But somebody told me, and I was in the record business and I'd sold out, and somebody told me that um, Alan Skirton, who was my hero, when I grew up, Alan Skirton was my hero because I played right wing and I was pretty quick and I used to go to Highbury and watch him. And someone told me that Alan Skirton, when he left, became a milkman. And on his round was Highbury. So here was this icon of mine delivering milk to the front door and, and the wrong side of the stadium. Mm. And I said, no, no, I'm gonna, when, when I sold my record business, I said, no, I'm going to change all that. I'm going to represent these guys to make mm. sure that they get what they should get. As it happens, in doing all this research for the book, I found Alan Skirton. Wow. And he actually said to me, I was never a milkman. I did think about it, but I was never a milkman. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I know what you mean, John, because you know we were inside the stadium and adulation, and then suddenly you drop, or not drop, you, mm. your, your career ends. And there's nothing. Yeah. And there's no support. I mean, it's, it's tough now, but, but you've got the money to help you. Mm. In those days, you had 70, 80, thousand people screaming your name and then one day it stops and for me I couldn't believe that I could meet John Samuels, George Armstrong, Alan Skirton, Ian Ewer, Peter Story, Jack Kelsey, all those guys mm. and they'd become sort of little old men when they stopped yeah. playing football and I didn't that's why I got into football agency to actually stop all that happening so mm. when people say to me Robbie you know how can you justify 150,000 pound a week you can because they're earning billions for their employers. Yeah. So it's only, it's only relative. So I don't, and they're entertaining millions and millions of people worldwide. So I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with some players saying, I want what he's on, mm. when they're not that good. But mm. uh, generally speaking, footballers at the top deserve what they mm. earn. Go back to your question. The stats. Um, the stats <laughs> um, I love the variation, by the way. No, but I, that's so interesting what you say there about the players, uh, you know, earning billions for their employees. Uh, that is so true. But yeah, going back to the stats. <laughs> so going back to the stats. So, so Arsene's um, evolution, we all evolve. Arsene's evolution changes again when, when uh, Stan Kroenke gets uh, more involved with the club and they start implementing um, a stat-based um, decision-making process. And they, they, they bought a company in America called Stat DNA in Chicago. And it... it um, it owns a company, um, I call it a warehouse, only because it's that big, it's not a warehouse really, uh, in Cambodia, which has stats on every single player in the universe. If there's someone on Mars playing football, they probably know about him or, mm. or her. And um, it's interesting because um, it absolutely tells you what that player is about statistically, but ultimately it's always the human element that has to decide. And Arsene's never stopped mm. that process negating, no, I'll say this backwards, Arsene has always negated the process beyond um, just figures. So he said, give me all that and I'll look at it and that's fine, but I'm making the final decision. Mm. So my only criticism, and you know, I, uh, you may have gathered I am a supporter of Arsene, and I think as a, as a supporter of Arsenal, he has given this club a regard, not just a respect, a regard in the world which we kind of had because of history. We didn't have because of performance. Mm. And that has been, and I'd love us to win the Champions League and I'd love us to win the Premier League and I do get frustrated. Uh, I mean, you, you look at the Mustafi deal, um, Arsenal will say, we did well, didn't we? We got him, the, uh, the um, sell price, the drop dead sell price was 43 million, we got him for 35. They probably could have had him for 38 weeks ago. Mm. So those are the sort of things that frustrate me. Mm. The oh, decision-making mm. process is and what, too and long. And that's another question I was going to ask you because it frustrates you. It frustrates the life out of me and most of the fans around the place. And it's led to most of the frustration at the start of this season 
I believe has been because of that. Because, all right, they've got it over the line now, but it took so long. Why does Arsenal deals take so long? Last season, we didn't even sign an outfield player in the summer. Why, oh, why do they take so long? You see, like, a team like Man City or Chelsea or United, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, we're interested in him, and they either get it done or it's off within a couple of weeks, then they're on the next stop. Our thing seems to drag on so long. They did sign Granite early. All right, they got Granite done early, but yeah, that's true. Right, they okay, did, okay, they did but what about all the rest? Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a frustration that I, uh, and I'm wanting to be supportive of the regime. I think Ivan, I mean, Ivan takes some stick, but he's a great guy. He's a, he's a great administrator. Mm. I've known him from his time in the US. I've watched him grow. He runs a really good club. Stands a long way away, and I think he has his own mindset, and they, they are what they are, and that's, you know, that's fine. Dick Law does a great job. I mean, he's the caveat between the playing mm. side and the administration side, and it's a tight team. The frustration I can only assume, Robbie, is because of what I've just said. You know, there is a process, and mm. sometimes I think, uh, if I have a criticism of our, of our sense, sometimes it's, uh, uh, the human element is taken, um, it takes too long for the human element mm. to press the button. Okay, well, what, what about this question? Um, this is another one of my criticisms, right? Now, most of those other clubs seem to have either a director of football or sporting director. All of them do. The Juventus have one, Bayern, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man City, United. Why don't we have that system? Well, we kind of do in Dick. I mean, Dick sits between the administration, which is Ivan, and the management, which is Arsene. Arsene's got his team around him. Um, I mean, sadly, people like Pat Rice are no longer there. But there's, um, there's a really good, solid situation between those three people and, and the board. If anything, mm. the board probably slow it down a little bit. But sporting directors is not necessarily a panacea. It's not mm. necessarily the answer because a lot of sporting directors that I know have favoured agents. Mm. So they have a system where they'll feed a particular agent. I w we want this player. We want a left back and he's got to have this, this sort of bias against him. Arsenal, Arsenal's interesting actually, Arsenal's stats, are, they, they have something called hot streak bias, uh, which, which um, indicates, for instance, uh, using a left back as an example, when the left back charges on and pushes on, um, you know, um, how successful is he in pushing on against leaving defensive gaps at the back? Um, and, and those sort of stats, I think, feed quite well. But that process does take a bit of time. Would it change it if there was a sporting director? Well, all you'd have to do is take out Dick Law and replace mm. him with a bloke whose name wasn't Dick Law. <laughs> so it, it doesn't really... We do have a sporting director, mm. and that's Dick Law. OK. All right, well, m moving on a bit. You're an agent. We don't always have a good, you know, the greatest of name agents, you know what I mean? We, we see these deals and we've always been told agents are taking a load of money out of it for themselves. And, you know, a lot of times even you even hear managers um, blaming agents, but you do have a very important job to do. What, what do you think when you hear that sort of criticism? Well, it's, it's actually understandable. I mean, people, people have grown up with the word agent being not a good, not a friendly word. It is in the entertainment business. It's, it's accepted, you know, Hollywood, mm. Hollywood agents have respect, estate agents don't have respect. I think it's, it's sort of one of those things. The problem is, Robbie, there are 600 intermediaries now in the UK um, inverted commas agents. Of the 600, probably 590 don't do very much. And, you know, they pick up the Sunday people and go, oh, well, he might be going there. I'll phone the club and tell him I've got a line into him. And they t tend to trip the good agents up. The good agents will always manage the players. I mean, look at someone like Jonathan Barnett, the way he's managed Gareth Barry. Um, not Gareth Barry. Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale. Um, He's done all right out of that, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done all right out of that. But, but there's the, you know, he's, he's, he's managed him since he was a kid. And I have yeah. to say, um, Pogba, people say to me, how can, how can that agent earn that amount of money? He's looked after Pogba since he was a young kid. He's looked after his family. He's looked after the relatives, the friends. He's taken his mindset. He's taken his education. He's taken his personality. He's taken his lifestyle and managed it. And the answer is he can get £20 million or whatever the figure in reality was. May or may not be that accurate, but it was reported as £20 million. Um, a bit like Jonathan Barnett's done with, with Gareth, they've managed them correctly. Mm. So at that point, when the sum of money's that big, they can say, well, I want that out of it. 
Then it's up to the club. Mm. Um, if the club wants to pay that kind of money, it's there are some bad agents that ride players and come in at the end of it. There are even crime syndicates that are involved in mm. some parts of Eastern Europe now who jump on agents and say, well, here's a little bit of money. We've taken over this player now. We want this from the club. And the club, then it's up to them if they want to pay. The, the simple reason is they can because the system allows them to. Mm. Now, is the system wrong? Um, the system is wrong, yes. But not because there's agents in the system, but because the regulations are not drafted correctly. The way the regulations are drawn out is not particularly the English FA's fault. It is as much FIFA who have abdicated that responsibility. Um, the system allows people who are not, I was going to say regulated, but, but, but not learned enough to come into the system and trade people like you as human flesh because you're an entity and they can do. What the system should allow is for people to be trained, monitored, managed. I don't have a problem with anyone earning whatever sums of money are commensurate to the size of the transaction. Uh, I do have a problem when certain managers lean towards certain agents. Obviously, deals are going s in certain directions, and the authorities actually know it, and they turn a blind eye because it's too difficult for them to monitor. What about agents? Um, now, I do this transfer daily show every day. Now, are there occasions where, maybe even you, <laughs> you could be honest there, but, you know, I've, where agents deliberately feed stories to the newspapers, for instance, about a player to try and get him a move or to even just to really, they're either trying to negotiate a new contract with a club he's at or to bump the money up a bit. You know, if, he, if I'm linked, if, if I've got a player and my player's linked to Arsenal, Chelsea and so forth, he's, you're going to push his money up. I think that's a small issue by comparison to what's around the corner. And what's around the corner is that there are overseas consortium um, from, or consortia from China, for instance, who are buying clubs um, as lifestyle entities and putting their families in to play with trading transfers. And I think prices will be askew. Agents will become a rarity over the next five years yeah. as more international ownership becomes more secular the game's going to change dramatically i think couple that with the fact that the next television round in three years time may well not involve a broadcaster as the lead financier of it it may be one of the tech companies i mean um, if amazon want this it's theirs it's theirs because they can afford to outbid sky because they have a business which is that dynamic not that dynamic um, but also, let me, let me talk you around this, because there's some interesting situations that go on in, in football that perhaps people don't realise. Um, there's a particular player out there at the moment who is subject to um, a reasonably sizable offer. Uh, from, this is between two Premier League clubs. And the only reason I'm not naming the player is this, the process is happening. It wouldn't be fair to all the parties. Um, I talked to the agent last night because he happens to be a mate of mine, and we were discussing the possibilities. Now... That offer has been rejected, even though it's sizable. In his contract, he, this player is 23 years of age. Um, when it comes to next year, in January, he can go abroad for compensation, which is 400,000, which is tens of millions away from where the price is today. So the agent now has to think about his player. Now, now you're the agent. Do I want my player to, to go and play Premier League football at another Premier League club? now or do i say to him you know what stay where you are sit on the bench play when you play or don't play when you don't play the decision is if he does play if he gets injured things can go wrong of course but if he stays quiet professional does his job be it on or off the bench in january his compensation is four hundred thousand pounds he then disappears to a european club presumably not of stature because he hasn't played. So Real Madrid isn't going to come knocking. So he now goes to, I don't know, Ghent in Belgium or wherever, who hold him for a game or two, and play him uh, a few times here and there, sell him on for half or so the value of what his offer is today to an English club, make four or five million 
in the process because they've done that. They've just parked the player. They've done good business. He's played for them cheaply for six months. Next summer, he gets sold. The agents get five or six million pounds, seven million pounds, whatever the figure is. The player gets a lot more money. The player's back in a club where he wants to be. The overseas club has made money. Everyone's done well. And I'm saying to you, there's a scenario that people wouldn't even know in most cases because the process would be going on without the newspapers and without the clubs yeah. knowing. One day he's here, a year later, didn't quite work out, he's now back here. Now, what was the story behind that? So that's, that's a situation, one of the situations that happens today, and the agents make a lot of money, but everybody benefits. Now, is that right or is it wrong? Mm. Or is it just the system? Yeah, I suppose oh. the system is the system. I mean, and it's a lot of this is explained brilliantly in your book. Um, it's a fantastic book. Um, tell us about the book and uh, where we can get the book. Um, it's called The Deal. And uh, when I originally sold the football agency, um, a lot of the publishers came to me and said, will you tell it all? I went, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I'm not in Alex Ferguson's league, but I didn't want it to mm -hmm. be that kind of you know, book. And then uh, Little Brown came to me, and um, I was a fan of Harry Potter, and they do Harry Potter, so I thought, well, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Uh, and we've written it uh, with uh, James Olley from the London Evening Standard, who, who covers Arsenal, in fact, yeah. um, who I have huge respect for. And, and he's managed to get a really good book out of me of lots of stories, lots of, I mean, things like um, what really goes on in some of the football clubs. This is not a secret, really, but I don't think the fans really possibly take it on board. A lot of contracts these days are configured with, with time frames. So because the money's uh, so big, um, incidentally, I'm looking at some of the transfers happening now and we're like a day away from the final mm. day of the winner and there'll, there'll be a splurge tomorrow. Why will there be a splurge? Because that two to five million pound prior today is now 12 million pounds. Now, where did that come from? Well, it came from the New Deal and with television, but that's a big jump. Mm. That 12 million pound player, 10 million pound player, 15 million pound is now 50 million pounds, 40 million pounds, and everyone's looking at, at their balance sheets going, I know we've got it, but you know, to spend that on mm. him. So as a consequence, you've had a raft of big deals and a raft of little deals. I mean, West Ham have done some interesting stuff. You know, they bought, what, half a dozen at four or five million? Mm. If they're right or if they're wrong, we'll, we'll find out. Um, although Zaza, I think, was a great mm. loan and might have fitted for us. I was hoping he might end up at Arsenal, but anyway. Um, well, maybe it was that penalty miss that's put everyone off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been. But, you know, I think there'll be a little run on it tomorrow because people have held back and because the prices mm. are just so are just so ridiculous at the moment. And, and the wages, of course. I mean, mm. Everton signed a 33-year-old, um, I can't remember his name as I'm talking to you now. Um, oh, yeah, centre off. Centre half, yeah. 30 Ashley Williams. That's the fella. Yeah. 33 years of age, as a centre half, you need legs. And he's on 70 grand a week. You know, that's the market where we are. So anyway, going back to the to bonuses, a lot of players' contracts are built in because the wages are so big. Well, if he plays 30 minutes, if he plays 60 minutes, if he plays... So it's interesting for me to watch managers substitute. And you think, oh, he's coming oh, on at the 65th minute. So must have our players get taken off on <laughs> 70 minutes. <laughs> so, you know, no, no, no. no. <laughs> no, no, no Arsene's more, <laughs> Arsene's more for the team. But there are managers who are briefed by the mm. financial, financial people at the club. You know, if you have to bring him on, bring him on after 60 minutes, it's just, wow. it saves us 30 grand. I mean, that's wow. true and it's real you know, and it, it has to be taken into account. There's also managers that, that, that bring on players, not always because they want to slow the game up in the 89th minute because the boy's been great in training that week and if he comes on, he gets an extra 25 grand. So good luck to you, son. Off you go. Wow. Wow. You, you, don't, you don't see all those intricacies there. You don't see them. So the book is available... The book's available um, from the 8th of September. It's called The Deal. It's, um, it's on uh, Little Brown. Uh, it's been published by Little Brown. And um, I hope people find it interesting. It's, it's, it's the insight of what goes on in football deals. Cool. Um, can, we, can we have one to give away? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, yeah that'd be yeah. brilliant. I, I think we could do a great competition I'll with that. sign it in blood because I bleed red. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, just before you go, right? Because I like how I've got you. I'm going to ask you like some quick fire questions right on the transfers um this summer so for you what's been the best transfer this summer I you know we get, obviously we we haven't got to the final day but so far this summer what's been the best transfer for you i think jack is going to be an amazing signing 
I think. Yeah. I think he's. I mean, he'll just get on with his job. I think he. I was really chuffed. In fact, I did Sky Sports um, a couple of weeks before he joined Arsenal, and I said, Arsenal's going to get him, and because I could, I could hear what was going on around the club at the time, and I thought, and I, I think, I think that's going. That's that is that, that is major. For me, I, I think he'll, he's going to be one of okay. the players of, of the transfer. Paul Pogba, is he worth it? Whoa, <laughs> interesting question. Um, you see, if it was a club that didn't have the resource of Manchester United, I would probably say no. Um, Manchester United can amortise that across sales globally. And my answer then is, providing he performs at any kind of decent level, the answer is yes. Okay. Lacazette, Alexander Lacazette, linked with Arsenal a lot throughout the summer. Last season, he was like valued about 25 million. Uh, this season, I understand that th there's even stories that West Ham put in a 43 million pound bid and that was turned down. Is he worth more than 40 million? Um, I've actually not seen enough of him to know if that, but you know, we've just talked about prices. Um, mm. The answer is in this marketplace, yes. I mean, the w you also use the word worth. Mm. Um, that's, that's a very subjective word now. So uh, in this marketplace, the answer is he's north of 40 million, yes. Mm. And you know what? One thing that people sort of forget about nowadays, because all the signings, it's all mega money, mega money, is the gyms. Now, well, last the season... Lad, the lad we signed, the, uh, the centre-back... Uh, Rob Holding. Rob Holding. Like, I wouldn't say he's little, but... <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I mean sorry, <laughs> little in terms of money. Yeah, um, yeah 2.5 million. I think that, you know, that's, that could be a little last end gem. Because mm. I think, you know, a lot of people shout about uh, the players we've just talked about, but actually, watch, watch the boy. I think, he's, uh, I think, I think he's, he could be mm. one of Arsenal's back-pocket heroes. Okay, listen, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I'm looking forward to the book. I could speak to you all day. Um, Thank you, man. Thank you. Next season when I'm doing Transfer I Daily, could I be ringing you up, trying to get some sniffs? <laughs> Cheers, buddy.